growth estimation that were provided are little overestimation. And uh, so what is the controversy that in 2011, we implemented the new series. And uh, usually when we do, when we adopt a new series, we also uh, try to extrapolate backward to get the comparable estimates. Remember, I told you the base years that if you want to compare the growth rate of India over a time period, you should always take the GDP at constant price. That means all the GDP has to be expressed in one particular base year price. Okay, so uh, that means we have calculated GDP on current price for different years, size 1948 to till date. And uh, but if you want to compare the growth rate, then you have to convert it into constant year. And since the present uh, base year that we are using is 2011-12, now we also did some backward calculation. But remember, some economists tell that this is not really a scientific method. That why the present base year cannot be used for uh, converting the previous year's uh, GDP values into the present year's base year value. Because the base year, when we change the base year in a base, new base year, we get different new commodities in the basket, new prices in, into consideration, which commodities really did not exist in the past. Right? If you remember, uh, again, say if you try to go back, say, to 1990s or early 2000s. In our production basket, there will be a floppy disk, right? But that floppy disk simply doesn't exist in our production basket now. Now, we are using a pen drive, but the pen drive did not exist in 2000, right? So, in the present base year price uh, methodology, GDP estimation, we'll have so many such new commodities and services. So, for example, your uh, Zomato, Services will not be available in 2010, right? Zomato, Swiggy, all these existed only in the recent years. In last two, three years only, they have come up. Similarly, your uh, uh, say Uber, Ola, they are adding value, right? They are creating services. They did not exist a couple of years ago. So when you are going for a new base here, the whole objective is basically to include all the new goods and services into our production analysis so for production we need quantity and we need a price okay? and uh, so we take the new price and the new uh, outputs into our consideration but now if you are using this base year price and trying to get the gdp of the previous years using this multiplier remember since there is a price component in it then there will be a huge difference and that is basically controversy. So you should remember that and many economists say that we should not uh, do any such extrapolation. Then people may say that then how to compare the uh, GDP estimation? We lose that, okay? basically that uh, you know, luxury. And so if you want to make comparison, then you are basically sacrificing the scientific nature of the data. So there is a trade-off. Okay? If you are not converting the past year's data into the present base year, you cannot compare the growth rates. Now, if you are trying to do that, then people will question that this methodology is controversial. Okay? That is why, you know, for the statistics, for statistics, it is always said that statistics reveals less. And okay, it is said you know, that what it reveals, much it conceals. Okay? So. Statistics is always in the controversy, and uh, you can use it your, for your own benefit. If you have a different ideology, same data can be used by two different set of people who have two different ideologies, and they will give completely different interpretation. So like that. Now, why I'm showing this table, and why this red color you see at some places. Now, you see that the first column is 2004-5 base old methodology. This was the GDP growth rates given by the same MOSPI, that is CSO, Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. So they have calculated this growth rate using the 2004 base year GDP data. Now, a new series came 2011 12. 
So in 2011-12, we see uh, that new series has come. Now, to get a comparable estimate, we also did a backward uh, calculation. The same NSCSO did one calculation. Now you see that in for the 2011-12 itself, there is a difference in the growth estimate. We had 6.6 percentage. If you use the uh, 2004 you no know, base year price, then we had 6.6 percentage growth rate in 2011-12. Now, if a new, if you use a new series that is 2011-12, then you get 5.2 percentage growth rate. And economists say that it had never happened in the past that for the same year, that is for 2011-12, at least for the base year, that the growth rate should not mismatch. Whatever may be the series, it should be same. For other years, it can be different, but for this year, it should not be different. But in the new series, we find a difference between uh, the growth rates uh, in the base year price also. And for other years also, you can see uh, in 2005, we had 9.3, then it comes down to 7.9, 2006, 9.3, it comes down to 8.1 in the new series. And uh, so that is basically, you know, people said you know, that uh, that during Prime Minister Modi's regime, uh, the past is uncertain. See, I'm not only telling that people criticize, I'm not telling that this is my criticism. Okay. So, uh, you should know that the, the controversy is like this. Uh, and you can take always a different position on it. So, there is a difference, and that's how people said, yeah, so the past is uncertain based on this kind of data. That in the past, we saw 9.3% growth rate, because, you know, that is again linked to a political party, UPA you know, regime. So, if you now tell the uh, Prime Minister Modi, sorry, your uh, Prime Minister, uh, in fact, uh, Manmohan Singh, I remember this 9.8% is growth rate. Remember, this was probably one of the highest growth rates in India's history. And Manmohan Singh was so happy when he was presenting his budget that uh, we may touch a double digit growth. But in the next year only, that global economic recession happened. So, directly, we know, came down from 9.8 to 3.9. And of course, this 3.9 was still a higher growth rate because the world was struggling to keep the growth rate positive. Uh, so, during such a time, we still had a 3.9 percent growth rate. But when you use the new series, you find a significant fall in the growth estimate for all the years. Now, come to first revised estimate uh, for 2016-17 and the second advanced estimate for 17-18. Now, if you do a calculation, you find uh, again a different growth. Rate. So these are, of course, these are revised estimates. So there are these are not problem because revised estimates will always change unless until you get the actual figures. So we find there is a difference, 8.28, then 7.1, 8.2, 6.66. I think these are reasonable. If the difference arises in revised estimate, these are quite acceptable. These are, even, these are not anyway final. Now, Arvind Subramanian provides his own estimate. The estimate used in this paper means basically Arvind Subramanian's paper. Now you see that okay, growth rates are same up to 2004 7.9. Now, after that, you get 9.3, 9.3, 9.8, 3.9, 8.5, 10 6.6. So, basically, they are using the same method as 2004 5 methodology uh, used by earlier uh, regime. Now, 2011 12 onwards, you find the difference. So, they are basically giving the same estimate that 6.6 .6 was the previous estimate. If you use the 2004-5 pressure, now for other years, you find a difference, 5.5, now 6.64, 7.4, and 8.2, and 7.1, and 6.6. .6. So there is a difference. You know, if you see the estimates here and uh, the Sobramanian's uh, estimates are basically a little bit different that you find. Okay? So, but remember, the major controversy arose from here. Now, for the growth estimate from 2011-12 onwards, the controversies are also there that uh, people are saying that there is an overestimation of the GDP and why such controversies are rules that we are going to discuss. Okay, so now, I, of course, I have covered all these things that why we have to derive a base year. I have already explained this okay, and uh, so I need to repeat this. How we prepare GDP that also I have told you. 
that uh, you know, we use the method of UN SNA and the recent revision done by UN SNA is 2008. So that we are now following. And uh, now changes in the new GDP estimates. So here is the major and controversy that absolute size of GDP is smaller by two percentage compared to the old estimates for 2011-12. I told that for the base year at least, there should not be any difference, but here we find that there is a difference in the base year also, and that is two percentage. So that is a huge difference. So that is main controversy. And a sharp rise in the growth rates of GDP and its sectors for 2012-13 and 2013-14. And uh, the change is uh, most visible in the manufacturing sector. So the controversy was actually maximum in case of the output of the manufacturing sector. And uh, the significant changes in the institutional composition of GDP that happened was, uh, this is basically the main controversy that uh, the new estimates show that the private corporate sector size increased from 23% to 34% of GDP. Private corporate sector, PCS, that abbreviation will be used somewhere else. Private corporate sector size increased from 23% to 33, 34%. So it's a huge jump, you know, 11 percent is, and then household sector size contracted from 55 to 34. So basically, we can say that switching from household sector to the private corporate sector happened. And that will show that manufacturing output has increased. And since manufacturing sector has a higher overtage because of the price and the, comp the share, then that will basically pull off your growth estimates. So uh, the controversy arose because the growth rates reported in the new series is basically different from the other macro correlates. You now, if you remember, I also told you in some other lecture that when our GDP is growing, at the same time, we observe that the credit growth rate has basically declined or the capacity utilization of the factories have also declined. Similarly, the capital investment has also declined. I have told you probably that uh, uh, India had the highest rate of saving and investment in the year 2011-12. That was 39 percent. Okay. And after 2011-12, it has steadily declined. So it's, we don't have to take into politics here. Because see, in 2011-12, we had a UPA government. From 2014, only Prime Minister Modi comes. Now, so it has nothing to do with any kind of political regime. This has happened so. And 2000, from 2011-12 onwards, we observed that uh, it has declined. And uh, so if your investment is declining, how will the GDP grow faster than the past? So that's the main controversy. So credit is not growing. That means banks are not able to give more credit. And that's why they are continuously pushing. Uh, and then recently also you see, RBI has reduced the repo rates and uh, why because now nobody is taking loan from the banks so that's why banks are giving you no know, calling all the valuable customers uh, like me <laughs> not like me there are many other valuable customers that's how you can take a personal loan and you can take a housing loan and uh, and you have ex we have increased the uh, credit card limit from 2 lakh to 2.5 lakh so you just go and spend 2.5 lakh anywhere, okay? So like that, they are they are giving such kind of offer to all the valuable customers. Why they are doing it? Because they know that nobody is taking their uh, loan, and if they give loan, then only they, they will make profit. So if nobody takes up loan, then this money basically goes to the reserve bank. So they have to keep it somewhere, and they keep it in the reserve bank, and in exchange they get uh, uh, the uh, the repo rate. So that's why now RBI is feeling that, oh, I am getting so much of money from the banks. They are not giving the money to the people. And that's why they are putting the money in the reserve bank. So let me reduce the interest rate. Because the interest rate that RBI will give to the commercial bank is basically the repo rate. And that is, it, so RBI is reducing the repo rate steadily. So that banks are discouraged to put their money in the reserve bank and rather they lend it to the people. Okay? Uh, but unfortunately, there are bankers who do not give loans to the people also. In fact, uh, uh, just trying to give you some more information, uh, if you look at the credit deposit ratio of different states in the country, 
odisha's credit deposit ratio is one of the lowest in the country not one of the it is the lowest in the country that means the banks in odisha are not lending to our people odias okay, i think state government should play a very important role in this regard so some of you may join the institutional finance department today or tomorrow so we have to monitor the banks in odisha that why they are not giving credit to our people okay, people struggle to get uh, a housing loan in fact there you know something some interesting fact i should tell you now the special secretary finance department you know who just retired i'm not telling the name since this is getting recorded uh, who just retired he was handling basically the institutional finance finance department now after his retirement he wanted to uh, renovate his house so he went to a bank to get a housing loan for that banks can also give you a loan for renovation of your house and he failed to get uh, the uh, loan okay and finally he had to take a personal loan to renovate his house and he had written it on the facebook and you can make out you know who had written that on the facebook and of course he is there in my friend list also uh i know him very personally so this is the situation that the former special secretary in the finance department is struggling to get uh, a housing loan for the renovation so this is a very bad thing why because many bank managers believe that you no know, uh, see when vijay mallya comes he can take money but you do not give money to an ordinary person you know, who is really needy even a salary salary people like us also struggle okay? uh see this former special secretary you know is basically uh, a, a valuable customer of the bank right he should get the loan also but he is not getting okay so that means there is some problem and that is also reflected in the statistics that the credit deposit ratio of odisha is the lowest in the country and it is much below the national average so that is very unfortunate so if you join the department uh, you know, of institutional finance please look at the, the, this issue and uh, so from 2011 12 onwards the credit growth rate has declined factories are not able to utilize their full capacity uh, and then capital investment has also declined in such a scenario how can growth you know happen in industry so that is basically the question by the economist and more dramatically in manufacturing sector the growth rate for 2013 uh, 14 moved from negative 0.6 to positive 5.4 So that the people you know question is that if your investment is declining so much and now the investment it has declined from 39 to 31 percent even below 30 percent is now of course if this is in 2019 uh, but in 2013 14 also it had declined at least by three four percent days so if your investment is declining how will your output increase industrial output that is the question basically people raised and. Uh, even now also the gross value addition in manufacturing growth rate is far higher than that was given by the asi that is annual survey of industries and or the revised iip that is index of industrial production okay, so because you know for estimating the growth rates you have different indicators either you take asi output or you look at the index of industrial production so from different sources if you see then we believe that to get this growth rate is not believable so this is not specific to uh, the manufacturing sector only this is also uh, happening in the other sectors and so if you see the difference uh, basically the base years 2011 12 base year and 2004 5 base year now see what are these colors one is blue and other is maroon or what do you call i'm i'm, I'm very poor at uh, recognizing the colors Okay. okay so uh, so blue color basically gives you the uh, 2045 base year price and then uh, the maroon color gives you the uh, growth rates of the uh, growth rates using the 2011-12 base year then every sector you find a huge difference in agriculture if you use the past uh, 2045 base year we had a higher growth rate and for agriculture in the new series there is a slower growth rate mining you find a huge difference manufacturing a huge difference you find in the new series we find manufacturing is showing a positive figure and then in the old series manufacturing sector had shown a fall in the output construction also there is a difference 
hotel trade and restaurants you find a significant difference in the old series hotel uh, trade and restaurants had given a very low growth rate and in the new series a very high growth rate so basically this is a major controversy that in uh, in in a particular year how can there be so much of difference uh, in the growth estimation when you change the base year and this is an, and so it is also shown in the overall uh, gross value addition and uh, you find that in the new series we find a higher estimate which is above six percentage but in the old series 2004-5 it was a it was showing um, about five percent or less than five percent is growth so now since i told you that the credit growth has declined so this is basically the trend that is shown so the overall credit flow in the country this is not specific to orissa for the entire country the non-food credit had declined the bank credit had declined and then resources to commercial sector had also declined so basically the overall credit flow has steadily declined from 2004-5 to 2017-18 steadily there is a secular you know fall in the credit now if you look at the capacity utilization then also there is a significant fall although there is fluctuation uh, because there is a seasonality and uh, so these are basically uh, you know monthly estimate you no know, quarterly estimates and uh, so if you adjust for the seasonality also then you also find a steady decline in the capacity capacity utilization of the factories then uh, here comes the enlarged size of the private corporate sector now the corporate sector has increased by 11 percentage okay, in the in the share of gdp now how did that happen that we shall explain and other sectors you find that okay in the public sector no difference 22.2 20 and 20.4 so it's okay old series and new series this is okay but in the private corporate sector now you find from 23 to 34.7 there is 11 percentage jump and on the other hand in the household sector there is a 11 percentage fall so basically now the some component of the household sector has moved to the private corporate sector in the new gdp estimation methodology this is the main and this is another major controversy and basically this is argument provided by professor r nagraj R. Nagaraj works in uh, IG Idea, Indira Gandhi Institute of Development Research, who is a prominent name. In fact, uh, he had come to Niger also. I had organized a workshop to give a lecture uh, at Niger. And then uh, he's a, he was also part of the committee when the new methodology was adopted. He was a part of that advisory uh, uh, group. And he himself was questioning this. Uh, that, you know, we all had given a different formula and then uh, uh, when the data was released, no justification was given, and they have just uh, changed the numbers. Similarly, so, Pranav Sen, you must remember that who had uh, uh, basically resigned from the Chief Statistician Commissioner's uh, office uh, because of the controversy that arose. Uh, so uh, then we see that, okay, so all these controversies arose, and then uh, there was a press release given by the PIB, that is Public Information Bureau, and uh, they basically argued that uh, you know, that we are creating a better database with improved methodology and we have used the latest global template that is UNSNA 2008 methodology. Okay? So they justified like this. So they did not give any pinpointed uh, justification for every criticism. Just they stated this. You know, I will also share the press release with you and you can also download it. It is still available on the internet. And the press release of uh, CSO or MOSPI for the GDP on the GDP controversy and that came in 2019 and then critics however say that uh, new growth rates are out of the line of the macro indicators just like you know, your credit deposit ratio the the capacity utilization and uh, so if that doesn't show then how your uh, uh, GDP is showing a higher growth rate and uh, so that I have explained that uh, uh, this they have basically taken out the uh, this is uh, what they have done is why that uh, private corporate uh, uh, sector output has increased by 11 percent is this is the reason that now there is a shift of quasi corporates from household sector to the private corporate sector uh, is it a simple shift or a statistical pause that's what professor r nagras is questioning okay and uh, quasi his argument is that quasi corporate uh, uh, quasi-corporate uh, corporates are unincorporated enterprises 
that maintain a balance sheet, but they are not audited accounts nor separated from individuals' personal account. So this is a controversial thing. It it actually has a little bit of ideological position, I would say. Now, see if they are uh, unincorporated enterprises, but they have a balance sheet. Now this balance sheet is not audited, and remember the output that you know, goes to the Minister of Corporate Affairs. These are basically the audited statements. If you are registered under Minister of Corporate Affairs, you will have to every annual every year you have to submit the audited statement to the MCA. But in this case, these quasi corporate sectors, which are not uh, uh, incorporated, they are not audited. But in the 2011 12 uh, uh, base year, we are now taking into consideration all these output in the manufacturing sector. That's how there is a growth in the manufacturing sector output. Now, whether you accept or reject, I told that this also involves a little bit of ideological position because now if you are doing some industrial activity, and uh, even though you are not registered and uh, when it comes to your accounts even if it is not audited whether you will overstate your inner audit or you will understate in your audit uh, in your audit report or annual report the biasness will be always a downward bias right because nobody would like to show a higher number in the uh, unaudited report also so that so that way it is not actually a controversy at all so if you look at the government's defense that this will be basically uh, taken into consider. This will be under rather underestimation, not overestimation. So that is why uh, we do not uh, accept the criticism. That's what that is the government's position. And again, for your information, I should tell you that in the new methodology, this uh, Ola, Uber, and uh, Zomato, all these are not again included in our GDP estimation. Now, where will you put them? Where you will put them under the industry or in service sector, but definitely they will not come under the household sector. Okay, so uh, let's say no. I told you that these are not my own criticism. So it depends upon certain certain ideological position which you, know, you are taking up. Because there are also economists who have defended government's position, and there are economists who have criticized the position. So let's say people do not take economists very seriously sometimes, you know, because they know that you no. Know, you have different uh, views and that is quite acceptable also that's that's how our democracy is so beautiful that you can always uh, criticize and you can give your viewpoints so now on the older methodology now to estimate the industrial output the cso used to take the rbi sample of companies basically rbi collects information on the companies those are operating in india uh, because of the financial transactions and uh, now you cannot take the data of all the industries so they take a sample of companies so what has been the trend of all these companies based on that you take the growth rates and uh, and then you blow it up basically you, know, you take some small sample and then give the it is so you blow it up and then that's how you get the total output of the manufacturing sector now in the new methodology we are using the minister of corporate affairs database which is much larger but on verified quality because these are voluntary disclosures. So if you are registered under Minister of Corporate Affairs, you just have to submit a document and that one no one will verify because that has, so they say that this is an audited document and uh, so you have to accept it. And then Minister of Corporate Affairs doesn't have time to verify all these things. You must remember that uh, when Prime Minister Modi came to power, a lot of controversies came up uh, that they found a uh, lot of bogus companies or the shell companies. He might have heard all these things. So they say that uh, there are so many cell companies that is on, on pen and paper, they exist, but they do not produce any output. So if that is the case, if you are using the Minister of Corporate Affairs database, then that will be an overestimation of the industrial output. That is another controversy. Okay? And so that's how it will lead to methodological error. And the, so the blowing up approach will also be erroneous. And uh, the older method used the annual survey of industries data, and people you know had trust on the annual survey of industry data, and uh, basically they do a sample uh, an estimation of all the industries, and that data used to be used for the GDP estimation. And uh, now uh, in the recent years, uh, we are using uh, the index of industrial product, and so the new method is uh, ASI is now practically redundant. 
Now this is replaced by the Minister of Corporate Affairs data. We are not using ASI data, rather we are using Minister of Corporate Affairs data. And uh, government basically uh, no, defended the argument saying that uh, we are following the international practices. And this is as per the methodology of the uh, UNSNA 2008. Okay, so uh, that was the defense of the government. And they, of course, they have also acknowledged or considered that uh, in India, where data are really a problem, we try to use the best data that is available with us. Okay, so, and remember, Subramanam Swami, Subramanam, uh, basically, yes, Subramanam, uh, had used other different, you know, his argument is that when your Minister of Corporate Affairs data are not really you know, good enough, you can use other indicators like uh, the transportation through railways and then uh, trucks and buses. Similarly, you can take the data of GST collection and that also will give you some idea. But remember, GST collection does not cover all the production units. There are many companies you know, who simply do not file the return in GST. So which position you will take, that is up to you actually. But these are the controversies somebody should be aware of. Okay? And uh, so in the older method, we used the output per worker based on the NSA survey, and then we multiplied the output. But in the new method, now we are using the we using a production function approach, and then to get the productivity. So marginal productivity is taken up uh, from derived from the production function, and we multiply the numbers of people work in the working age group. So this is a new method and after they are, uh, this is controversial. And uh, now this is Chinese argument. Somebody uh, in China had told Chinese premier, uh, Li Keqing Ang had told in 2007 that GDP data is man-made and hence unreliable. Okay. And uh, now in India, basically uh, now in India's context, uh, if you look at this trend, uh, that what has happened in the these are tables as well I have given basically that when you look at the new series there is a difference there is a huge difference between the new series and the old series okay, and uh, that's how these are not reliable and uh, again the numbers that I had shown are basically put in the diagram in the back series and the new series and uh, so the notable changes in the GDP composition in the back series included a reduction in the share of the service sector a rise in the share of primary and uh, secondary sector and a decline in the unorganized sector and i would believe that this could be true actually if there is a decline in the unorganized sector and the people are now getting into more organized sector, that could be true because uh, now the, after gst many people are registering their units to get the gst benefits uh, of course still there are many unorganized sector but still many people are going towards you know organized sector to get formalized and to basically avoid the tax penalties okay? and uh, but again these are some of the criticisms again so uh, let us gdp revision those are the numbers i told i showed you in the beginning now you find there is also a difference in the old series and new series of course the variation is less but then still there is a variation and uh, now the rising trend here is will be say that when the investments are falling, how is the GDP rising? So you see that blue line is gross value addition that is increasing, and gross fixed capital formation is steadily declining. Okay? Uh, that uh, orange color line is declining. And I told you that from 39 percentage, now it has declined to, they have given the data for 2018, so it was a little above 30 uh, percentage. And now it has fallen actually during this lockdown. It is probably less than 20, less than 30 percent days. So how, how is it possible? Okay. And uh, so to conclude, uh, that the latest revision of the uh, national account system seems to have uh, serious methodological problems leading to significant changes in the GDP estimates. And the CSO has mostly reiterated the changes brought out, uh, and uh, but not seriously addressed the issues uh, raised by the critics. And one way to solve the problem is to make the Minister of Corporate Affairs database available to the public to verify the official claim. You know, his government is not doing. And then uh, considering the growing doubts, there is a need to set up an independent commission of international experts to the entire revision process. 
So uh, this is all about our uh, GDP controversies and the position of the government. So with this, we conclude for today. Now, if you have any